it's all about coming up with ideas or products or, and services that are not the same as everybody else's, which is a real failing of most people. A blue ocean shift is a very simple thing. It means that you move yourself, you move your team from the cutthroat market to a wide open new market. Everyone gets caught in the rat race. The rat race then takes over their lives and then it's the survival of the fittest. So to successfully shift from a red ocean, the red ocean is obviously very gory, a bit bloody, a bit messy, um, which is where all your competition sit to a blue ocean, which is a, a whole new market space, depends on three key components. So let's stop looking around and get stuck in. So hello everybody and welcome to the Case Mastermind broadcast. This is the September edition. It's hello from me, Patrick Twitchett, and it's... It's hello from me, Melvin Manning. Good morning. And good, good afternoon and good and evening, depending on where you are in the world. Indeed, indeed. And we're actually recording this on a bright, sunny Sunday morning, aren't we? So we're very keen. It's and very lovely out there. You can see it behind me. Indeed. Oh, yeah, you've got a much better view than my plain white wall. But uh, I haven't chosen to do any any uh, of that nonsense stuck up. Well, we're going we're, we're to bring some warmth into our conversation, Patrick, today. Oh, indeed. You should have said that in a much more sincere voice, Melbourne. Well, it is sincere from my voice, point of view. <laughs> indeed. Indeed. Anyway, it's, it's like Melvin's turn this month. I, I chose um, the book of the month last month. So I want to share with our listeners uh, this month's book of the month, and it's over to Melvin. Well... I didn't have to think too long and hard about this, Patrick. Um, this is a book called The Blue Ocean Strategy. I have a copy here with me. I shall now put it to the screen. Oh, yes. Any, anyone listening, Melvin is holding up a copy of Blue Ocean Strategy. I am indeed. Strategy. It's a real hardback version too. And, to there's, up, and, there, and there's me behind it. And yes, and to big up the author of the book, who is that written by for our listeners? Okay, so this book is written by W. Chang Kim and Rene Mobornye. Now, they are Canadians. They are very, very highly educated individuals. They work in a, a university in, in Canada. And they've come up with this uh, strategy, uh, which is called the Blue Ocean Strategy, which is basically how to think outside the box well we like a bit of that we like a bit of thinking outside the box Melby. Well, it's it, it, it's taken me back a long way because having spent 42 years playing around in the advertising and marketing world and been heavily involved the first 25 years of my life it's all about coming up with ideas or products or, and services that are not the same as everybody else's which is a real failing of most people. Everyone gets caught in the rat race. The rat race then takes over their lives and then it's the survival of the fittest. Yeah, yeah. So a uniqueness so, then? There is, only if you create it. And I'll go into a couple of demonstrations and examples on that particular uh, aspect of this. But a blue ocean shift is a very simple thing. It means that you move yourself, you move your team, if you have a team, you move your organization, if, obviously if you're part of a much bigger uh, unit, from the cutthroat markets to obviously a wide open new market in the way that uh, you drive your processes. So to successfully shift from a red ocean, the red ocean is obviously very gory, a bit bloody, a bit messy, um, which is where all your competition sit, to a blue ocean, which is a, a whole new market space, depends on three key components. Having the right perspective, a clear roadmap and market creating set of tools, and building people's confidence at every level to drive the process that you're trying to create, or that you are going to create. Okay. 
So that's the simplistic outline of what the Blue Ocean Strategy is all about and what it can achieve subject to you sticking to your guns. So could you expound a little about those three well, aspects? I, will, I know I've you've got three to... main points today. I do, uh, I do. Could you expound on those three little things that you briefly touched on there just so people like me can understand? Well, I can, Patrick. It'll be an absolute pleasure. So the first point is having the right perspective. So you've got to have a vision. You've got to look at what you do, look at what you provide, look at what you produce, and look at it in a completely different way. And I'll go into an example of that very, very shortly. Okay. Um, a roadmap, which means you need a plan. You need to take it forward at various stages and levels, which is you know, quite a normal, simple thing to do, you would think, wouldn't you? But most important well, thing... Well, it, it, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, it, it's like anything in business. You have to, to plan and you have to map things out correctly. And I suppose what this is saying is that the marketing of your business can be broken down. You can build this plan. You've got to know where you're heading. And then you've got to, I suppose, work back from that. Is, is that yeah. sort of the... I mean, the word marketing, which is obviously... A, came from an Americanism in the 1950s and 60s. You know, it's not a very English thing. We like to talk about advertising. We like to talk about promoting ourselves. But when you're marketing, you know, you need the creative tools to be able to take you from A to Z. You need to go through the whole alphabet, basically. And you need to do it in steps and stages. Fairy steps, really. Yeah. No rushing. No pushing, no forcefulness. It's something that people don't realise. They think, oh, let's go and get a campaign out there. Uh, we'll do 50% off or up to 50% off. And we're going to sell absolute godzillions of these products or we're going to get so many inquiries for our services. And they get very disappointed when they get maybe three. Yeah. Or none. You know, that's the problem with yeah. the science of promoting oneself. Yeah. So, okay. sh sh shall we move on? Well, yeah, yeah, no, I think that's really good. But the, the third point there was that building people's confidence at every level. Could you just sort of explain to someone like me, just well, basically, you know, you've done with the other two, what that means? There's, there's, there's a thing in the world that I believe, you know, we're all familiar with. It's called no like and trusting. It's been around for centuries. Yeah. And you have to build people's confidence to do that. In doing so, you can't just go like a bull straight into their faces and say, you will buy this, you will do that, and you will go here and you will go there. You have to slowly, slowly catch the monkey. It's very important that when you go into these, let's say, sciences, that you win people over. So you tease your, your campaign in. You do subliminal messaging in the nicest and honest possible way, and then you go not so much for the jugular because that's the wrong thing to do. You then do a soft sell and you encourage someone to like you and buy from you. Oh, I see. So that's meaning at every level of the marketing process where you're drip feeding to people, you're, you're building that confidence that they should have in you or your product. You have to. You don't walk into a room and everybody likes you first time around. No. You can walk in and be this big, overbearing character or a larger than life person, and people will be asking questions. So, what's that all about? Yeah. And until they get to know you, they're not going to be confident with whatever you're putting out there because you only get yeah. back what you put out. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And I think. You know, because a lot of the marketing now has gone to this newer level in the last number of years, hasn't it? Where people are giving away free, valuable content because that's the way of building the relationship with the, the clientele, isn't it? Look, we're going through awkward times at the minute, Patrick. We have, we're, you know, we're sitting here in August. We've just come through a very serious viral situation. You know, it's, it's, it could be deemed a, a, a plague like the. Um, environment that we're living in it's not going to go away so soon people have to find a point of difference now yeah. everyone's out there fighting for the same buck yeah yeah it's very hard to get on the map survive 
and then more, most importantly, try and make a profit. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think you've explained those three points really well because I'm, I'm not the world's best marketeer at all. And it's just nice to know that people listening in might know Zilcho about marketing. So I think that broke it down quite nicely. So thank you very much. That, for, the benefit, and, uh, for, the benefit, for the benefit of the listeners and those who are watching, I like to keep a more simplistic, unscientific view. But I do like to have points of view that make people think. I don't want to expound and start coming up with very big words and huge scientific explanations. It's simple. It really is simple. Yeah, and well, that's the only use, language I understand, Melville. Well, yeah, but you know, in in times like this, if you can stick with the KISS principle, which is a very old adage, keep it simple, stupid. But you know, without wishing to make that rude, because it's not. You know, you're talking to the masses here. You're talking to millions. You're talking to hundreds of thousands. You're talking to specifically focused marketplaces. Keep well, it right. simple. Keep it simple. Indeed, and especially with our viewer base, um, Melvin, I understand there's tens of people listening. So. At least ones to tens. <laughs> <laughs> but, we'll, but we will work on that, Patrick. Well, yeah, but we're niching down on our audience, you see. We are, but we're, we're, we're focused, are we not? <laughs> so anyway, that's enough of me um, going on. So to those joining us today, just a quick break away from our discussion there, just to let you know that if you wanted to know more or be a part of the Case Mastermind community, all you need to do is follow the links in the notes below to our website to find out more. And I'll see you there in case you didn't already know. Now let's go back to the discussion. So, um, Melvin, please. Um, well, I, I just like to. I just like to expand. Yes, I would like to expand, uh, purely in the vocal sense of the word. Um, <laughs> Blue ocean strategic moves is something that these guys kind of bring to the introduction of this process. Okay. So they've spent decades. These guys learning taking in data, bringing everything together. It's, uh, they've made the science of it to, to create the simplicity for people like us. So they have done studies of over 150 um, moves of, of various uh, planning strategies, and they've looked at over 30 industries across, a, let's say, a century of experiences. So, um, Mr. Kim and uh, Rene, they focused on discovering the common factors that lead to the creation of what we are now calling, in inverted commas, blue oceans, which is our nice clean water. It's our nice, nice clean seas. Now, obviously, in identifying those um, uh, oceans, obviously, they found that obviously there are winners. And there are many losers. And obviously there is, you know, significant points of difference between the two oceans. And obviously when people drift into the red ocean, when you're in with all the mire and the plethora and the unenviable competition for which you then have to stand up and fight against, you know, you, you, you put yourself into a quiet spot by doing that. Now, when you're running through these things, um, you have to look at the fact of, can you make a profit? Are you going to go out there and be a pound cheaper? Are you going to go into this red ocean and do everything for 10 quid off? Are you going to be offering up to 50% discounts? You know, all your profits going out the window. Can I survive this process over the next four or five years? It's not what's happening today. It's what's going to happen to you in the future. That's a red ocean. It's a mire of all sorts of action that you're trying to literally fight in. It's like pushing water uphill. You're looking bemused, Patrick. Well, I'm 
I'm I'm listening very stupid. So what I'd like to do, rather than waffle on about the, the difference between the oceans and what have you, because I think you you should have got that by now. Let's just give you a little example. Now, Patrick, have you got any thought in your own mind what kind of businesses may be in a blue ocean? Right, okay, so the, 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 the blue ocean is these people that are making themselves very unique, aren't they? But yeah, they, they, they've created uh, uh, an, an atmosphere for themselves that nobody else has got. Okay, well, I so I think there's some that I feel... Um, in, in different ways, so I think Apple market very differently. Even yeah. though they've got a product very yeah. similar, and I'm sure that that will be a controversial thing to say. Similar, but they've got a product likened to other products in the marketplace. But they, I see them as unique. Would they be a, an example? A good example? They would be an example because you know if you look at their product just in uh, let's say the regular product range that they have they came up against a man called bill gates many moons ago yeah, yeah. who who put together this incredible thing called microsoft and microsoft you know created this family of tools that now controls our lives what yeah. um the guys at apple wanted to do was make a point of difference so their big selling point back in the day was their graphics, was their actual pictorial uh, presence on screen. The, the solidity of their graphic software and their, gra and their, and their graphic boards that control the, the, uh, the equipment made a huge difference and gave them a, 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 a quite a unique uh, stand in their particular marketplace. And Apple became the tool for graphic designers, became the tool for let's say the advertising industry over and above PCs back in the day. And yeah, even yeah. to this day now, you'll find that the majority of people will be working with Apple Mac. Yeah, they, they, they perform, but they, they then become an innovator and a market leader, didn't they? And all of a sudden you've got like the, you know, the, the iPod, you know, all these thousands of songs in your pocket mm. and then the iPhone. I mean, this, this is this is a, a magical piece of equipment, which allegedly the expert would would uh, probably suggest that it's more stable than an Android. But Androids are getting better and better and better, so we're not knocking the Android. Well, no, and 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 I think you know Apple's become this really unique thing, and um, I. You know, I love watching adverts. It's terrible when you're in business, you enjoy watching adverts. And then I comment to Paul Lorraine, who sit there about, oh, did you see how they projected that in the advert? But the Apple advert, the latest Apple advert, is that guy getting the box and sitting it on that little table in the lounge. And he kneels down by the table, he lifts the top of the box off, and then he peels that thing off the screen mm. and the music's sort of building up and his face is lighting up and i was like there's they're not showing the features of the phone like all these other adverts are they're just going this is an apple this is exciting and i was that is absolutely brilliant marketing what did you know about apple before apple well exactly Nothing. you know about you know about william tell and you know about the beatles He's taken the word Apple over. Steve Jobs, the late Steve Jobs, was an incredibly intelligent man. Yeah. What's the Beatles got to do with it? I don't even know that one. What's well, that? Their, their, their recording uh, label was Apple. What was it? I won't say that. There's my ignorance. Their, their fortune is tied up in the Apple Corporation. Oh, wow. There you go. And, and William Tell, you know, try to shoot an apple from someone's head. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, because apparently it was nothing to do with Alan Turing, was it, Apple? Because he uh, apparently, apparently. a poison apple and then the apple's got the bite mark and everyone yeah. pertains that to Alan Turing, but it wasn't, apparently, was no. it? No. But you know, the word apple has become now synonymous, Steve mm -hmm. Jobs, and obviously moving on from you know his passing, to where they are now, which if you look at any of their presentations, they are something 
to, to you know to be seen everybody needs to see when they launch a new product it's the most amazing i don't know what you could call it it's theater you need theater yeah yeah, yeah massive. which leads me leads me to my example patrick Oh, okay. I wanted to give another example because James Dyson, I think, is quite... Ah, well, well he's, he's, he's definitely a blue ocean man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but no, I, I, won't, um, I won't interrupt your flow. So move in. Well, let's, let's talk about James Dyson for a minute. Okay. You know, we, we, can, we can digress. It's allowed. Because we're yeah. doing a, po a podcast on a beautiful sunny day. James <laughs> Dyson took the hoover... And well, the vacuum it, cleaner, or the, or the vacuum cleaner, indeed. Hoover is blue marketing. <laughs> well, Hoover was back in the day. Everyone calls it but, Hoover, don't they? But yeah. now, 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 now it's a, a word in our own dictionary. Everyone yeah. does Hoovering. That is amazing marketing. But, but, but vacuum cleaning, James Dyson took completely to another level. Yeah. And Man. made you think totally differently, and he made you invest heavily. Yeah, and and another thing, and I don't know whether this aligns with the, the, the blue market side, but the, the innovation that he's created, if you look how the vacuum cleaner evolved over something like 80 or 90 years, and then Dyson comes on the scene, and now the vacuum cleaner has evolved in 10 years what it did previously in 80. It, yeah. you know, got... It's all, it's all it's all cyclonic and all that kind of yeah, but battery operated science going on charge up and give you 45 yeah. minutes and it is totally turned everything on its head and i, well, yeah, I really admire the guy well, that is that is a very good example of the blue ocean strategy and he is uh one of the test uh cases that the, the, the guys put forward as oh. an example so oh, okay. we've kind of, we've kind of jumped the gun a little bit there Oh, sorry. I do no, but it's, 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 but, but it's, it's, no, not at all, but it's, it's a worldwide phenomenon. Yeah. You know, he builds it here in the UK in Warwickshire. He also has a very big uh, setup elsewhere in the Far East. Um, he has become obviously very highly recognized for his science. He employs people who are incredibly clever. Obviously, a bit of an awkward time to start employing people in this current, uh, let's say, climate, but he's still driving forward. He's still looking to invent. He is the mad inventor, but he's not mad at all. He's the most incredibly clever man. He is, he is. And because um, I was listening to him uh, being interviewed recently, he's very well spoken. And I didn't know that um, his, his dad died when he was quite a young age mm. and that his dad was a teacher at like a, a you know, privately run school yeah. and they didn't necessarily have the money to afford that private education. Um, and the school, because he was a teacher there and I, I don't know if he had much life insurance or anything, the school gave the children, um their education at the private school that was their sort of way of uh, helping the family it was a yeah. fantastic thing to do for them and of course he's so well spoken and he said when he hit the american market they're all over him because he's like speak oh. very very eloquent and the oh, yeah. americans were like oh oh you know oh you're wonderful Listen, he, he had it all got he, he couldn't be a more perfect individual if he tried you know educated <clears throat> very eloquent, intelligent, good looking. I mean, you know, how much more do you want of a person with all those attributes? Yeah, do you know do you know one of the things that he um created for the gardening and building industry? Do you know what that was? Go on, tell me, go for it. Tell the audience. He was behind, you know, when the wheelbarrows come out with Instead of the wheel, they had the ball on them. Yeah, he that did was him. the ball. Yeah, he did the ball. Yeah, yeah, he did the ball on that, and uh, I didn't know that. And uh, apparently, they didn't make hardly any money at all. It didn't go very well, but it did go round corners quickly. Pardon? It went round corners quickly, but it didn't do so good. <laughs> well, yeah, 
but it, it didn't sink in the mud, did it? Oh, it was no. brilliant. Idea. I did. I just, I just thought whoever invented that must have made a fortune. And apparently, they didn't. So, well, listen. Sometimes you have to go a second time. It doesn't always happen the first time. Absolutely, absolutely. So let's talk about some very clever Canadians. Yes, yes, indeed. Let's talk about. Let's talk it. about some very clever Canadians that took something. See, James Dyson took something that wasn't failing. He just basically took a product to another level. Yeah. The Hoover, the vacuum cleaner, it was always there. It was always doing incredibly wonderful things. And it went from, you know, very low prices to incredibly silly prices over the years. But we're going to talk about something that was failing, something that was dying as a, as a trend, something that had been so popular 100 years ago and was basically on its, on its knees about 20 to so, 20, 20 to 30 odd years ago. And a couple of very clever Canadians thought, what can we do about this particular industry to make it more attractive and something that we can look at and recreate? And what we're talking about here is a little known name called Cirque du Soleil. Oh, Cirque du Soleil, well-known name. And, and now, I'd, have thought, I'd have thought that that was... French, I assume they were French Canadians then, were they? Yeah, they, they, they took the French Canadian bend to it. But they were very uh, eloquent uh, uh, Canadian gentlemen. And they created this idea, which then blossomed into, how can I put this? Um, it went to 300 cities across the globe. It appealed to 150 million people worldwide. It took the idea of circus to a level that nobody could have even thought about but hey ho in the blue ocean here come these guys so it created a blue ocean of new market space so they took a piece of the ocean and made it their territory it became under their ownership nobody could copy them and if they did they never did it as well so the the production of uh, the Cirque du Soleil uh, theatre, so it was, you know, it's, 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 we're talking about theatre here, it was unbelievable. Because obviously years ago we had, in this country, we had Billy Smart Circus, and we had this one circus, that one circus, and obviously P.T. Barnum is, our, is one of the most famous yeah, circus oh, owners yeah. ever. And they they made a great, They made a great film, yeah, The yeah. Showman and what have you. Yeah. But the most important thing here is they majored on animals. They majored on famous clowns and they created star turns. And obviously in the middle of it was this great person called the ringmaster and controlled the whole show. Cirque du Soleil, no, no, no. They weren't having any of that. They wanted theatre. They didn't want stars. They wanted everybody to be a star. They want every part of the performance to be a feature. It was all costume. It was all incredible, unbelievable acts, all equal to one another. It was music. It was a whole invention of basically Hollywood in a circus ring. And if you've ever been, I don't know that you've ever been, Patrick, but I personally go to see Cirque du Soleil whenever they're here in the UK on a regular basis. Oh, really? And, oh, really? Uh, oh, yeah. And, nice. and, and there are so many different themes of the theatre that they create. Yeah, they're one of the, the variants. Yeah, as well. they're one of the few industries that have a permanent show ongoing in Las Vegas. So, wow. you know, they created such an environment. It was, you know, a multi-billion dollar industry to this day you know people were buying back in the day dvds they're now streaming video there's all sorts of other features to having a cirque de, uh, de soleil uh, environment yeah, so, yeah and 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 i think on that point melvin because the circus was always this thing because we used to see in big smart circus used to be on the telly didn't it you used yeah. to watch the circus on the TV yeah, back in the yeah, day. I don't yeah, yeah. see it anymore. But it was, you're, you're right, it was 
you knew that you were going to see the clowns were going to come on. You knew someone was going to bring on some elephants and get them to stand on something and do a couple of tricks. You knew that there was going to be a lion tamer and that he was going to put his head in a lion's mouth. You, you knew that was it. And you, you knew you were going to get the trapeze and they were going to do some things like that. And so you almost think, oh, if I'm going to the circus, I'm going to see the same thing again. But it was so, great yeah. for the kids. It was great for the kids back in the day. But what makes the rapid growth of Cirque du Soleil so remarkable um, is that it was achieved by reinventing a declining industry. Yeah. Yeah. Massively. Really. So, unfortunately, the, during the lockdown, they suffered so badly that, that they're now in trouble, aren't they? I think? Well, unfortunately, people can't go and see them, so they can't do the performances live. You'd have thought they'd have done some sort of video thing. So yeah, oh, you can get video. But obviously, it's not quite the same thing. That's a royalty-based. Oh. That's a royalty-based income. Yeah. And yes, yeah. they can put, they can put the shows on and film them, but obviously the income coming in to support the the uh, wages that they uh, gifted to yeah. the performers obviously isn't there anymore. Because I don't know whether you're aware of this in recreating this environment of this blue ocean uh, business is the fact that it wasn't a cheap, it was not a, a, an inexpensive purchase for a ticket. It was an expensive purchase for a ticket. They, yeah. they, they, they gave it added value to the point where you could be paying, you know, a good few hundred quid for a ringside seat, yeah. dependent on obviously where the show is. But then that's in quality venues with quality yeah. performers. Um, so you've got to pay that premium for it. And I mean, did they use a, did they use that sort of pop up a tent here environment or was it actually done in proper theatres? Both, both. They had a big tent. Okay. Here in the UK, they would use Battersea Park in London and various other venues. Uh, and uh, in, a, in a fixed venue situation, were under a structure, they would often use places like the Albert Hall uh, to, to, to do their shows, Wembley, and, wow. and so on and so forth. You know, wow. I've, I've, seen, I've seen them in Nottingham and various other places. You know, they can pretty much rig up anywhere. Yeah, so great what flexibility. Got, yeah, well, what you've got here is um, supply and demand power. It's that different that people want to go to see the show. But it's not all about the acts. The acts are obviously very important, but the costumes are very important. The music is very important. The actual flow of the show for entertainment to, to obviously from when you arrive to when you leave, needs to hook your, your attention from beginning to end. And they have found the way. Yeah. So that is Blue Ocean strategy in its simplistic form. I can go into the science of it, but I don't know that that will help the viewer right now, Patrick. No, that's fair enough. That's a really good example of it, uh, Melvin. And uh, yeah, really interesting to see that. Good. Really good. So that's just obviously in, in looking at what Cirque du Soleil succeeded with. Um, they, did not, they did not win by taking customers from an already shrinking circus industry which basically historically only catered for children. What they did, they made it a event for the whole family from one age to another, putting no particular figure on that. It was circus for everybody. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's their point of difference. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and made it maybe not exclusive, there's a higher end ticket to it. There's a higher end audience as well. So, yeah, and I well, would imagine it becomes almost a bit of a, a brag to say, I've gone to Cirque du Soleil rather than, yeah. oh, yeah, we all nick down to the circus. Well, I'll, I'll give you one little line that says it all, in, 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 in my opinion. Cirque du Soleil created a business in an uncontested marketplace and a market space that made the competition irrelevant. That is Blue 
ocean strategy. Make your competition irrelevant. Yeah, that's a really good point because I know I've heard other people speak of this. And, and in fact, I was actually talking to someone the other day, giving them a bit of advice. And there's nothing wrong with communicating with your competition. Too many people don't want to speak to their competition, do they? But actually, if you can speak to a competitor, you can share ideas, especially yeah. if you're in a different area. If I'm, if I'm talking about someone in my industry and they're based in Liverpool, where well, they've got their target there, I've got my target there in Essex, but we're hardly likely to clash. Yeah. So why can't we sit down and share ideas and share innovations? Absolutely. But let, let me give this to you with the circ. When you went to circus years ago, any one of you out there, you went predominantly because it entertained the kids. It was all about looking after the children. Cirque du Soleil went every marketplace. But what they did do, because of the quality of what they produced, they encouraged and then they built up a huge commercial um, channel of business. Businesses were buying into taking their clients to these shows as a perk, as oh, a so night out, as uh, a positive gain for people's performances and so on and so forth. Because you can. You wouldn't do that years ago. No, that's right. That, that is so true. Because I know years ago, I mean, it's always been football matches. A company would buy a stand or a box at a football stadium, wouldn't they, to take clients to. I think things like boxing now have become, because boxing's become a little bit controversial. So now some companies won't do that because of the controversy. And even if I mean, you wouldn't want to take clients to a circus in that sense, because it is a family thing. But also circuses become controversial, the animals the treatment of the animals. There was a lot of, you know, people shouldn't be forcing animals to perform. So they've, they've differentiated themselves from that. The Cirque du Soleil didn't use any animals at all, did they? No, there are no animals. But the most important thing from a commercial point of view is that because of this new environment and because of these new customers, they could charge several times more for their ticket price than would be, let's say, perceived to be the norm back in the day. Yes. Which is how, you know, you know I'm not going to use, I don't want to say got away with it, but they added the value to it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I would. They're using better music. They're using yeah. better um, entertainers. So there's an element of they have to charge the higher ticket so, price. So when they launched, what did they say when they launched? What was their first show called? Their first show? Yeah. I have absolutely no idea, Melvin. We reinvent the circus. How simple is that? Oh, lovely. Yeah. So the just point. to give, just to conclude on that point, and we can summarise later, but Elon Musk, I believe, is a very well-known name to most people out there now. Yeah, Tesla, SpaceX. Yeah. I think he cut his but, teeth in PayPal, didn't he? I believe so. I believe so. But look at what he's done. Is he in the box? Is he in the red ocean? Or is he outside the box in the blue ocean? Oh, in the blue, in the blue. Isn't he? Is he a wealthy man? Absolutely. Are the boys from Cirque du Soleil, did they make a few bob? Has, has, has Sir James Dyson made a few pennies over the years? I think he can afford a night out at McDonald's, definitely. Are they, are they fighting the masses with what they do? It's clever. Isn't it? Very clever. So we aspire, Patrick. Indeed. <laughs> these guys, these guys, they're there for everybody to see. Wikipedia, Google them, whatever. It's there for everyone to see. You don't have to believe what I tell you. It's there in full glorious colour. 
outside the box in the blue ocean. That's, that's, yeah, that's amazing. And I assume these guys that have written the book, they're, they're more, have they had their own businesses or are they purely just studied all these successful companies and people? They had an idea. They had an idea. The man that invented, if you like, professional networking had an idea because he had and faced a problem. Yeah. Yeah. The man that lots of networkers have aspired to. Are you going to name that man, Melvin? I will name name that man. His name's Ivan Meisner. He created a business out of nothing because he had problems with his business and he couldn't work out how on earth am I going to get more business so that I can put food in my fridge. And he got together with family and friends and created a monster called BNI. Which stands for? Business Networking International. Yeah, that's the... All over the globe, 130 countries. Yeah global isn't it yeah there's been lots of copies but nothing's gone Nothing, nothing's really come near to it no 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 so this is blue ocean strat- stratagem this is where it comes from Cirque du Soleil um, there is lots of data if you want to have a look at the data um, those that are interested there's plenty of it uh, there is something uh, on the internet called the Cirque du Soleil Blue Ocean Strategic Move. You can link, link into that. There's much more mm-hmm. data and detail there. But you know, if you're interested in Dyson or, or you're interested in networking or you're interested in obviously what Musk has done, not just for cars but within the space race and so on and so forth, these guys are very, very good examples. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. No, that's really great. Well done, Melvin. That's good. So, I don't know whether I can elaborate in any way, but the simple summary of this is don't think like everybody else does. Yeah. Yeah, so, and I think in summarising, um, you know, there, there's probably out people sitting out there now listening to this, you know, the, the, the both of them. That, would that uh, be the, 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 the 10 of them, would that be, Patrick? And both of them, the <laughs> complete audience. <laughs> Sorry, them. I was wishful, think, wishful thinking there, sir. <laughs> um, no, so I, I think they may have a really great idea, they may want to be marketing their business. So these are obviously great stories, you know, Cirque du Soleil and and, and Elon Musk and, and all these industry and Tesla and everything and James Dyson. But what about, you know, Joe Schmo or Joe Bloggs, whatever you want to call him? Um, those people that are listening, how can they apply this to them? Let's, let's bring it down because we, we're talking fantastic stories, fantastic projects. How can we bring it down to people, people like me, Melvin, the, the simple man on Great. Patrick, it's it's a very sad part of business that we have to now, let's say, hit upon is the fact that probably of every 100 great ideas, one might come to market. And there's many reasons that will happen. People just don't believe that they've got something that's great. People haven't got the money to take it forward. People aren't mixing with the right people to even do the evaluation and so on and so forth. So all I would all I would say to anybody that has an idea, at least do some research. At least have a look and see where the markets are. And if you can't afford it, talk to someone that you know is approachable. So at least get some advice. There are people that don't want to rape a situation because all of a sudden you've got a big idea. There are some genuine people out there. And the beauty of that, if you're able to find any of these individuals, is that your product may start to work. What happens from there, we just don't know. But history tells me that if it's that good, it will fly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like, um, 
It's like they say about um, Thomas Edison, isn't it? He was never an inventor. He didn't invent the light bulb. He took, I think, um, well, there's loads of people, they say, I think Mr. Swan was one of the original. I'll say there's, there's one or two others that would claim that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But he brought it to a commercial level. And yeah, I think... Well, it, Alexander Graham Bell. You know, you can name many. You know, did they invent it? Didn't they invent it? It doesn't matter. It's who brings it to the marketplace successfully that has their name flying on that flag. Yeah, maybe not an inventor, but an innovator. Innovator, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 I think it, you you know you're right. It people have got to, you've got to be able to network and build a network of people that you can trust and turn to yeah. to be able to share those ideas with in a trusted environment because this is the problem. And I've heard this again. Recently, um, you know, where people will have a business idea and they'll share it with the wrong person and they nick the idea. And that's happens. happens. I mean, I, can, I, can I give you an example of that, if I may? Yeah, yeah. Go for it. McDo McDonald's. <laughs> yeah. McDonald's was a stolen idea. Well, yeah, I mean... I, I suppose there's a debate, there's a controversial debate whether that's stolen. They had the opportunity to run with um, Ray Kroc. But, but they didn't. They didn't, and he, and he got fed up with it. Now, whether we <laughs> want to analyse his motives, uh, yeah. but he, he, he was the one who expanded yeah. their, um, their company and... Well, how would you feel, Patrick? A man comes along who's a, no better than a vacuum, door-to-door -door vacuum cleaner salesman, takes your idea and builds this immense monster and you get pushed to the side, which is what happened to them. Yeah, they only got pushed to the side, though, because they wouldn't listen to him. Correct. And he was the innovator. How many stories are there like that? Yeah, but when you, when you break that down, going back to what we were talking about, the McDonnell brothers were the inventors. Yeah. He, he was the innovator, yes. He was the innovator. Yeah. And, and they, they did innovate the burger industry because you burger, they didn't invent the burger, but they innovated the production of the burger. Oh, they were the right. masterminds of that, but he innovated the way the business would franchise and grow. Just just as Henry Ford did for the motor industry. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's, it's really interesting, really exciting stuff. And, and um, yeah, I just, I just want people, other people to, to see that and catch the vision of that, you know. Well, let's hope we, can, well, let's hope we can catch the attention of a couple of innovators. Indeed. Indeed, Melvin. That would be... Uh, Fantastic, because I think that there's too many ideas go to the grave. Um, yeah, the number of people, you know, it's like when the Dyson come out and people would say, do you know what? I thought of that years ago. <laughs> yes, but you didn't do anything about it, did you? Correct. You didn't so, yeah, as, as the McDonald's brothers didn't do anything about their talent. No, that's right. That's absolutely right. Yeah, and, and the, the, the movie tells the story, you know, quite well. Yeah, what is that movie called? Oh, unfortunately, it's something that slips, slips, slips my memory on that one. Oh well, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look that up while we're talking. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, because um, uh, I do want our our, our audience to. Uh, the founder, yeah, well, no, that's it. The founder, founder. I can't claim that for myself. Uh, that I had to Google that while we were. No, <laughs> that's fine. Listen, we can't remember everything. We can't all be good at everything in the world. We can just be good at one or two good things and focus on them. Indeed, indeed. But that that was an amazing film. I love that film. Absolutely brilliant. Um, but it what you, I did feel for the McDonald brothers. And I thought, well. You did sort of ask for that. That might be controversial, but they did completely ignore his pleas to innovate more. Um, and, and you can't do that. You've got to evolve. 
And you can't blame him for what he did either. If you look at the way that the world has evolved, because everyone he knocks, I'm going to get, I'm going to get slightly political here. I will warn you, Melvin. You know what I'm like. But people will knock capitalism, and yeah. people will wave the banner of communism. And what, what great innovations have come out of Russia and China in the way of the, what communism has reared? I can't, I can't name one. But I can. However, name yeah, but however, commerciality in China, thus being the world's greatest producer of most product, is not communism. Well, indeed, no, there's that the, because the, they've allowed capitalism to be worked in a communistic state. Yes. Capitalism yes. brings innovation because Apple wanted to be a better product than the other people out there. You know, Henry Ford yes. wanted to do something better than other vehicles. Elon Musk wanted to do an electric car that was far greater than anybody else. Innovation, innovation, innovation. People knock it, but that's the way that the world has evolved and given us the technology today to make this world a much more efficient place. Elon Musk, together with um, uh, Richard Branson, are yeah. now obviously in a space race uh, battle. It's not a fight, it's a battle because it's innovative to do a journey for argument's sake from London to Sydney through the stratosphere in, in a matter of hours. Yeah. And, you know, that's going to be a, a life changer. Massively, massively, yeah, yeah. Because what is the trip, because from, from here to Australia is, for us, is for the furthest point in the world, isn't it, I think? Australia. Approximately 24, five hours. I, I, I don't know exactly, but yeah. it's, a long, it's a long journey if you, if you try and do it direct. Yeah, Many so... Many people stop off. So to our... To our tens of listeners that are listening to this in 40 years' time, and, and they're on their flight um, to Australia in the stratosphere that's going to yeah. take them two and a half hours, they'll be going, wow, in the, nine, in the 2020s, they were talking about the miracle of Australia being done in less than 24 that's hours. Right. Remember, 40 years ago, they were talking about Concord. Yeah. So, you know, th these are, there's nothing new here. It's How many Friday. years ago was they talking about Concord, Melvin? About 40 years ago. Yeah, yeah. When they were putting it together. And yeah, obviously it was, it, was it? it was commercial up until the, the crash, what was it, 15 odd years ago in France? But the fact yeah. of the matter is, is that, you know, it's all progress. Yeah. However you want to look at it. Absolutely. And it is all blue ocean. <laughs> it's not in the Maya with everybody else. Very good, very good. So ha, have you fully summarised your summarisations? Well, we've summarised beyond summary, I believe, and I think that most people of the two people that are listening to this, which is probably you and I, um, <laughs> are, are, are pretty, pretty clear on the strategy. <laughs> yeah, no, and that's good. And, and I think... Um, as we, we, we like to remind people, you know, we're part of a mastermind group. Yes. And that's where you get to share those ideas in a trusted environment where you can bounce things off other people um, and take their input. It's all about, anyone looks at networking and business networking about finding clients. And that's why people mess it up drastically. That's why people go to networking events and start trying to sell to everybody. It's about oh, they're, they're hunting, Patrick. They're hunters. Yeah, hunters. They're not farmers. And they're, all they're doing is just got their sales head on all the time. And it's almost sickening because it's about building connections. And I would say a vast majority of the connections that I've built, I've never done any business between us. But we work closely together, we share our ideas, we help and support each other. Competition in certain environments of networking <coughs> creates jealousy and envy. Yeah. And in, in, in the environment of mastermind where it's about helping people, um, that's removed because everyone's sitting on the same level playing field. Absolutely. Uh, it's competitive, but 
in a situation of uh, education? Absolutely, absolutely. And, and that's why Case Mastermind has never been a, a sales pitch environment or, or anything related to selling yourself. It's purely about coming aside out of your business to take yourself aside and deliberately go, right, I'm going to talk about my business, work on my business rather than in it, not be stuck inside the inside the box inside the business but outside the box yeah. which is what you know this blue marketing strategy is all about thinking outside the box and the blue we, ocean is a very calm environment yeah did i just call it blue ocean or did i call it something else you said blue blue strategy <laughs> see i'm really good at missing things so <laughs> But it's the blue ocean, which is the calm ocean. The red ocean is full of 20, 40 foot waves. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's it. I've, I've been in both, and I much prefer the blue ocean, I can assure you. All I can say to anyone listening to this is this is a pretty good read. And, and for this, those, those on very audio, very, I'm holding up the book again, Patrick. <laughs> but this is a very nice environment to read out of. It's a good book and it's full of good sense. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds a really fascinating book, Melvin. Definitely. Definitely. So I, I would hope very much that um, both of our listeners will, will benefit. Oh. <laughs> I'll, I'll make it my business to, to write some kind of uh, positive feedback on this. <laughs> <laughs> indeed, indeed. But um, what I will say is we, we do like um, uh, some feedback on here. And each month we do check uh, the, uh, the feedback that we receive. And we always ask for a key word to be inserted into our feedback, Melvin, which I'm wanting yeah, you, to think about you, now. Oh, I did it last month. It's your turn this month, Patrick. No, 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 no. Hang on a minute. You did the book. So you've got to think of the word. So, so start thinking of the word that they've got to put in. But it might be blue ocean or something like that. But whatever it is, you have a think about it. But we want our listeners to write their review and insert the word in. Okay. The word um, is... Word is, word is, uncontested. Uncontested. Oh, oh, there we go. So there you are, listeners. The, the two listeners that are listening in <laughs> now. The the word is un, uncontested. There's a great chance of winning a 50-50 chance if there's only two listeners. So if you both write a review, you've got a fifty percent chance of winning. So. There's, there's, there's no better odds you can find than that. So that's really good. <laughs> Other than a dead sir. Oh, excellent. So I think you, uh, you've, you've explained that really well um, this month, Melvin. And uh, I shall endeavour to look forward to next month. And uh, yes. if anybody wants to join us, they can follow the web links and we'll have something to remind them of that after. I believe that's your pleasure, I believe. Of what? Next month. Indeed, indeed. Shall we give? Shall we give? Do you want to give a? Little, do you want to give a little clue or a little, a little taster? <laughs> should we bait people up with a little teaser for next I think, month? Indeed. I think you should. I think you should be t dipping your toe into the blue ocean. Indeed, indeed. So yeah, um, I, I am, um, and it's not about preparation, but I am a big believer in preparation, as as most people who know me know that very well um but uh next month we're going to be talking about a, a book called the magic of thinking big i'm going to be talking about things about stepping outside of the flea jar have you any idea what i might be talking about sounds now? very similar to uh, a subject very dear to my heart when you're outside of the jar you're outside of the box no well, well indeed indeed i'm going to be talking about Stepping out of our comfort zone into our stretch zone. 
um, and various things like that and, and overcoming fear. Oh, God, fear. it's going to be colossal. There's going to be at least tens of people listening to that broadcast, Melvin. Well, we can't wait, Patrick. We can't wait. <laughs> the world waits with bated breath. So I think we should... I think we should draw this to a close now, shouldn't we? Indeed. I think we've, I think we've, we've done this, and I, I think that we should now draw on uh, any commentary that should uh, come our way. Well, indeed. And we look forward people to receiving to any, any questions. Yeah, any comments, questions, please leave it in the post below. We scour um, uh, social media night and day, desperately looking for someone who wants to interact with us. So, <laughs> well, if there's any more than two people out there, we would love to hear from you. <laughs> Even ask your nan's opinion. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, why not? <laughs> well, there may be a new way of doing the knitting. You never know. <laughs> oh, how ageist of you to assume that all nans are doing the knitting. That's very it's terrible, amazing. isn't it? It's terrible. It's I do apologise. I apologise to all nans. <laughs> But at least you'll get a huge response from the, is it the U3, is it U3A, is it called that? Uh, it's the University of, like, the Third Age. That's it, the University of the Third Age, for, you know, people in, in later life. So, there you go. Yeah. Another plug there for something that I know nothing about. So, very good. Anyway, I'm very impressed. We better complete, or we will never complete. So, it's, uh, it's once we'll now make it. We'll now make our way back to Linda's Farm Island and play with all of the uh, hippies out there. <laughs> so, folks, it's goodbye from me. And it's goodbye from him. Thank you very much. Goodbye. goodbye. <laughs> so, folks, thank you for joining us on our broadcast. This has been brought to you by Case Mastermind, a brainstorming mastermind group that you the listener can be a part of. Just follow the links in the notes attached to our website and Eventbrite pages to see what events you can join us at. If you enjoy our content, please share and review. One of the talented people who leave us a great review with that month's watchword is given out on our monthly broadcast will be selected for the comments. If you would like to hear more, please hit subscribe button so you can hear more from the case mastermind team so remember folks listen out listen up and listen in see you soon